I thank the Minister for, for giving way. He's been very, very helpful and, and is sort of a, um, you know, a showing that his department is already um, getting to grips with the details of the bids behind it. So I, I thank him for his remarks so far. Could he just make sure um, in the five minutes or so that are left um, that he focuses on this point about the priority areas? I'm still not quite clear. I think he's, he's been helpful around that area, but I'm still not quite clear whether or not if we are starting from a priority area to designation, whether or not that relegates us automatically to being a long way down the list of um, projects being considered, or whether or not the other factors, which I have talked about and which he has also mentioned very carefully and very fulsomely in his remarks, will allow us to um, vault up the list of uh, eligible projects um, to, to get a, 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 more, a, a, a better showing in the eventual decisions on allocations. Minister. Uh, yes, I think it's really important to say that that indexation is just one part of the wider improvement of the wider assessment process. So the categorisation into category two, yes, that is taken into account. Uh, however, there are a number of other factors in the assessment that are also taken into account, just like the members of parliament support, and I think it's really noteworthy on this bid, that two members of parliament are backing a bid that is targeted towards the areas of deprivation. I think alongside um, so I, I, would, I urge the gentlemen to look at the um, information we set out in gov.uk, which clearly sets out that it's just one part of the assessment process. So yes, the weighting has an impact, but so does strategic fit, so does deliverability, so does value for money as well in the bids. So those are all important parts of the process. It is not solely determined just by the categorisation into, uh, into level two. 